Hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm Teresa Coates. I am the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and I am excited to be here today. We are in a different location, so if you have <laughs> you've been with us before, you're like, but wait, this isn't your studio. This is my personal studio. So I have two in the house, one where we film and we do all of the cuddle stuff, and I have one downstairs where I do all of my other sewing and quilting. So we are in this studio today because we are talking about long arm quilting. And that is a whole other thing. And I cannot fit a long arm in my cuddle studio upstairs. So it is down here. We are here, different lighting, different sound. So please be patient with us. Please let us know if there are any um, issues that we can fix. And otherwise, we're just going to go with what we've got. So um, again, I'm Teresa Coates. Thank you so much for joining us. I am very happy to be here for Sew Together Tuesday. And um, before we get started, I want to remind you that it is National Quilting Month. So hence the long arm quilting episode here. And to remind you that we have a fabulous giveaway that is on our blog that you can totally go and enter on the blog. You need, you can enter once per email address. So go on over to the blog, enter to win there. It's $4,000 plus worth of prizes. So basically if you don't have a studio yet, here it is in a box getting shipped to your home. So you want to make sure and enter to win this because it's going to be fabulous. So um, I am excited to share a bunch about long arming today. Also, if there's any questions, we are happy to try to answer them. And, um, you know, we're still learning this. So that's part of what we're doing today. So I have been a quilter for almost 30 years. Um, so I started quilting when my son was young and I have always sent my quilts off to be quilted. And I and I traveled so much before the, uh, the lockdown that I always just sent my quilts off and got them quilted and it was fine. But after the lockdown, I was here and I had time and I thought, oh, I'm gonna totally learn how to do this. And so I got myself a small long arm from Cali Quilt Co. And she sent it down to me and I have been trying to learn it since. And it has been a really fun experience. But what I realized is that I didn't have as much time to learn it. We started these Sew Together Tuesdays as I was hoping. And so today we're doing it a little bit differently. And my partner who is usually behind the camera is actually beside the camera now and is gonna come on and join us. Welcome. Hi everybody. <laughs> so Good Hawk, morning. So Hawk is gonna be here today to help to talk about the long arming because while I am the one who does the quilt making, he's the actual quilting person. So he has done a bunch of that. We've done a lot of practicing, right? We've done a lot of practicing <laughs> and need to do more. Yes. <laughs> so today we really just kind of want to talk about how you can sort of get started. The long arm that I got is really, it's a basic one and we'll talk a little bit more about it, but it's a very, um, it's a good starter model is what I got because I wasn't sure how much I wanted to do and I haven't been able to do as much as I kind of thought I would. Um, but he's really taken over it. And so we're going to talk about that, right? Yeah, my, my job typically is in the event industry, so I have not had uh, as much work in the last year as I would have liked, but I have had a lot of time. So I've been doing a lot of uh, arting. I've been doing a lot of painting <laughs> in my studio, and uh, I'm always interested in learning uh, new mediums. And with uh, Teresa and I working hand in hand, it just made perfect sense for me to start figuring out how to art on the long arm quilting machine. So. We're gonna we're gonna go through some of my trials and tribulations. Um, I'm certainly um, uh, we're we're gonna highlight the fact that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> that neither of us do. We're just faking it. Um, like we said before, I just experiment, and that's exactly what we did for this. Is we just did a bunch of experimenting. So we'll talk about the things that worked, the things that didn't, um, and maybe how you can get started doing the same thing. So first, I want to talk about like why you would long arm. So long arming is different. Long arm quilting is different than quilting on your regular sewing machine in lots of different ways. The biggest difference is that with a long arm, the machine moves and with a sit down model or with your just regular domestic machine, the fabric is what moves. So that's a vast difference. And like you were talking about being the artist, like that has made a big difference in how he's been able to work with it because he's used to moving a pen, moving a paintbrush, moving a thing across the solid surface to create his art. I am used to pushing it through my fabric through a sewing machine and that's how I create mine. So it's, they're very different 
modes of creating, I guess? They are. So uh, the basic stitch regulator on your is sometimes available for your domestic machine. Mm -hmm. And so there's a book that I've been working out of, um, and I'm going to hold it up here. Um, there. This is the book that I've been using in my journey. Uh, Christina Camella. Camelli. Camelli, mm -hmm. beg your pardon. Uh, First Steps to Free Motion Quilting. And she has a, a compendium book or a secondary book uh, with a bunch of motifs that we're going to talk about later as well that I've started to step into. I didn't tell him uh, about the giveaway. Oh, okay. Well, I do totally that. forgot you guys. So, right. So we have a giveaway. <clears throat> so Christina is a friend of mine from Portland. She is a long arm quilter. She has done a ton of work and she's written several books, taught craftsy classes, all sorts of stuff, incredibly talented. And as we have talked about a great teacher. So her books are super easy to access her Instagram. She does like these little lives on there. You can just learn a ton. So I really recommend that you follow her. She's also offered to give away a copy of her new book, which is, I think we said step-by-step -step free motion quilting. Yes. Um, it's the second book to this one. So um, we haven't gotten the hard copy yet. I have a PDF of it. She will send the winner a PDF or a hard copy of that book, as well as we are giving away three yards of your choice of Cuddle 390. So the winner today, if you share our video um, on to all your sewing friends and um, on your Facebook page, whatever it is that you want to share it to, you will win. One winner will be chosen, and you will win three yards of C390 Cuddle 390 and a copy of Christina's book. So. There you go. So share away and we will give you a prize. Somebody, a lucky winner at the end. So yeah, her book has really been a great, they got, it was sort of like, I bought it, I don't know, years ago. I bought it when it first came out because I thought, oh, I'm going to learn how to long arm. And then it's taken me this long to get there and I still, I'm not really the one who's doing it. He is. Um, it's been a great road map for me. Um, I have a tendency to just jump right in without <laughs> any sort of uh, direction or assistance uh, and then realize that I'm in over my head and then go find somebody that can help. And that this book has this book has been that for me. Yeah. Um, so. All right. So let's uh, do so, right, jump in and so, talk about some stuff. Right. So I want to show first. So this is a quilt that I did when I first started working for the company. So about five years ago, I made this quilt. I made it with some art gallery fabric that I had. It's a little drunk, drunkard's path sort of quilt. Cotton on the front. And I thought, can you put cuddle on the back? And you can. And so I did. But I didn't do it. I had to send it off to somebody. So I just want to show you. So this is the beauty of a cuddle back egg. So if you have wondered, can you put cuddle on the back of a quilt? You 100% can. I have done it on a bunch of quilts. Um, right now, they are all at uh, AccuQuilt Gallery for an upcoming show that's there. So that will be available in a week or two, but I don't have them here to show you. So I just have this little one that we're gonna show. This is long-armed. It's by, um, it was long-armed by a friend of mine, Karen at, Cosmic quilting. Cosmic quilting. And she is down here in Southern California. She has done a bunch of my quilts for me. So this has been a great way to do it. And I realized how wonderful it is. So long arming gives you the chance of doing some really interesting things with the, with the design of it. So when you're doing it on a domestic machine, you tend to do a lot of straight line because that's the easier way to do it. Or if you're familiar with your um, stitch regulator, then you can totally do it that way. It's just a different movement. And you've done a little bit with the stitch regulator. I have. I definitely I definitely find more control, obviously, with the long arm machine, being able to um, being able to move the tool as opposed to move the canvas, if you will. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of move in and out of painting talk versus quilting talk because it's basically the same thing in my head now. Um, so bear with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a great start knowing I could do it. A lot of people wonder, can you? Yes, you can. So one of the other things that I did, so let's grab that one. So this is another cotton quilt that I put together. So you can use cuddle three. Obviously that's what I used for this one. This one I wanted to show you because this is a luxe cuddle on the back of a cotton quilt. Okay. So this is, I haven't even bound it. This is just some cotton scraps that I had from my time when I worked for Robert Kaufman. And then on the back of it, we have, um, this is basically LC Mirage, so Lux Cuddle Mirage. Let's see if I can hold that there up for go. you guys. Okay. It's so I pebbled. wanted to, yeah, look at it. It shows up so well in the light. You guys can see that really oh, well. Yeah. So this is what it looks like when it was quilted. So let me show you the front closer. 
so you can see, let's see if we can get that light to show up there. There we go. So now you can see a little bit of the pebbling. So we'll talk a little more about pebbling, but the the uh, cuddle, the Lux Cuddle works really well for it too, but it does a totally different thing, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we, we have, we know that everybody is trying to figure out how to use cuddle on the backs of quilts, no matter what the quilt front is, what the top is, we're sort of going through all of the various options of cotton on top, cuddle on the bottom, like a uh, Lux cuddle on yeah. the bottom. You're going to see what all of those different options look like and what works in my mind and what doesn't work as well. Yeah. Um, it, you're, yeah. Here, so what's next? So let's do it. So let's talk about the, so let's talk about the, the samples that you did. Let's oh, start okay, with the it. three of them. Got so it. we're going to change cameras. So hold on half a second. We're going to switch over so we can show you. Teresa's <laughs> going to be camera operator. I get to do the camera part. We're going to see how this works because I'm not really sure. All right. So we're going to switch it over so we can show. All right. So let's see if we can get the mic. Let's switch the mics over. Okay, here we go. So let us know if you can still hear us. Make sure that we're we're going. I'll show you. I think we need to do that. I can just leave it so I can do this. Okay. All right. So, sorry, we're getting there, guys. Um, so this is a piece that we did. We did. He did. I, you know, I spray basted it together. Is what I did, and uh, <laughs> we used a sweet strip pack that comes with the coordinating fabrics and we just put those together with a C3 on the back. So tell them what you did. Okay. And what we so learned. what we got, what we've got is um, a C3 charcoal on the, uh, on the back. There's the 80, 20, uh, no, 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 nope. No, nope. Nope. Just a uh, quilter stream poly request. Sorry. Quilter stream, quilter stream poly request batting. It's, um, not super thick, but it uh, definitely helps. And we applied both of those with the OD 505 spray. Exactly. Yep. Uh, and then loaded it into the machine and did some basic basting uh, stitches to kind of hold everything in place. And then I'm just going to, we just started practicing. So with the Lux hide on the top, what I found was you almost completely lose the stitches and the patterning. Um, here's some peb there's some pebbling up here. And then I did some, um, I'm going to say some, almost some wood grain up here and realizing that the more bold the pattern is, the more likely you are to be able to see it. But honestly, if you go through with your stiletto after the fact and kind of fluff up any of these, um, any of these stitches like you normally would, it basically completely disappears. So the quilting would have a, a practical application mm -hmm. in holding the front and the back together, but you start to lose a lot of the aesthetics. Now, if you look right. at that same on um, that same patterning on the back on the, on the C3, you can really start to see the definition. Uh, the C3 shows the, the quilting uh, really, really well. And so, so flip that real quick because I think the difference between it is amazing. So, so you can here's the high. see that, but then and you then can on the cuddle really three. see that. <laughs> the, the, the difference is just amazing to me. So people often ask if you can use the Lux cuddle on the back of it, and you can, but the, the C3 just makes the cuddle three makes such a huge difference in how it looks. Okay, so um, pebbling some wood sort of some sort of uh organic wood graining effect on these two mm -hmm. and then in the middle panel uh this is a c3 digital print uh jungle yep mighty jungle mighty jungle thank you and what i chose to do to just sort of two couple of things i chose to do on this one one uh i chose to um do sort of an organic big leaf pattern and then on this one uh, I just did echo quilting around the hippos and the elephants and then did some meandering stitches to connect them. Now, on this, you can barely see any of the stitching on the front. Because it competes with the print, you don't really have as much of an opportunity. And the stitches are getting completely hidden and almost completely hidden in the nap. Yeah, How you can you can hardly tell it's quilted. 
Right. So if you look at that on the back. Hee <laughs> This is my favorite. Let's see if we can. Right. Oh, so there it is. So there's those leaves. Check that out. And that was, um, you know, just some some freehanding on on my part. And it's very hard, I must say, to keep track of where you're at in your design on the print from the front. Right. You, so all of these. It's very blind. Yeah. You quilted from the other side. So this was the backing of the fabric. Correct. So we could see how it turned out. And yeah, the quilting on both the Lux and the print were, yeah, kind of blind. You quilting. really have to keep track. Now, uh, let's, okay, so let's go down and look at, this is the echo quilting around the hippos and the elephants. Let me see if I can show a little more of that. There we go. Um, and this is, this seems like it's actually working pretty well. It's, it's, kind of, it's pretty fun. Uh, I'm not trying to go into each, de uh, each design on the print and get like every, little eyeball or every little toenail. Um, I've picked just basically the outlines and with the elephant, I was able to, to, to duck in and grab the ear and I thought that was probably enough. Now, if, let's move on to the other, the other mm -hmm. side. Now, this is- I just um, kept trying stuff. Yeah, so this is C3, a solid on the front with the C3 on the back. So C3 front, C3 back. Mm -hmm. This, uh, we, this was our very first test pattern. And one of the things that we ran into almost immediately was that tension is significantly different, has different requirements than when you're using a cotton on the front and a C3 on the back. Yeah. So this is what happens when mm -hmm. you don't have your tension set correctly. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. I mean, uh, yeah. it, it's art. <laughs> yeah, no, not so much. No, it's kind of a mess. Right. So we definitely did some troubleshooting of anything. I'm going to come back up so we can talk. Um, but of anything we found, like, so what were the things that we did for troubleshooting? Because we, did, you had to change a lot of different things. Okay. So um, we changed uh, the thread path. One of mm -hmm. the things that we found was that certain threads have a tendency to unwind a little bit um with uh when when we're working with the this fabric combination so we were able to change the the thread path so that it would keep the thread wound a little better that was one thing that we did we changed the tension on uh the top thread mm -hmm. uh, i never had to change the tension on the bobbin nope. um touch the bottom bobbin as little as you possibly can yeah. for sure. Though there, is, though there is the ability to adjust the bobbin, uh, as a consumer, um, we're, that's the last resort. Right. And then the other thing that we did was we tested different threads, right? So the thread that we used on here was a really pretty variegated, but we couldn't get it to quite work out right. So we switched it and the thread that we ended up using that we loved was the, um, Superior. Superior. And honestly, as much as the thread gets buried in the nap, as pretty as this variegated thread is, once it's even after you get the stitching uh, tension correct, it disappears. It's almost, it's, it's not, there's not really a lot of value in picking a pretty thread when you're cut, when you're quilting into cuddle. hundred percent. Yeah. So for, for, so for this, we used a different thread that was variegated, didn't work. We also used an, um, not an upholstery, a, uh, embroidery thread, which is this here, which we did have some struggle and that it would, uh, it sort of unwound. Is that what was, yeah, we that was, that was, that was, that was part of it. And what, um, and we were able to correct that to some extent by changing how the machine was threaded um, to counteract some of the unwind. But what you would end up seeing was this yellow is actually the top thread pulling through underneath mm -hmm. or it's getting um, or it's getting caught on itself. And then that shows up on the front. And we so, didn't, we didn't have that problem at all with the superior. That's so, correct. That's the one that I would highly recommend, which when we were talking about it, like you get to this point and look at that beautiful bird that he just like, yeah, let's do that. Uh, we'll talk about little, just a second little, how you did it. A little eagle and a salmon. Mm -hmm. uh, and he just whipped it out, but um, oh, it was but beautiful. We, Hold on. Okay, good. But the, <laughs> I know we want to talk about how you did it. Okay. Um, but it's beautiful, but you do all this work and then to have the thread not quite behave like you want it to is really sort of depressing. So we figured out you want to get the thread right first. So how did you actually do this? You didn't just like 
I didn't, I didn't just freehand this. Well, <laughs> this was a great test. We used um, this uh, friction pen. Uh, and this was a question as to whether or not we were going to be able to use this heat sensitive pen mm -hmm. and then have to iron it to get it out of the cuddle so that uh, to release it off, off the cuddle. Would that affect the nap? As it turns out, you can iron this lightly on the front. Maybe we use, uh, and what are the, the mm -hmm. iron? I use the pressing cloth. The pressing mm -hmm. cloth. And that helped a lot. Uh, and we did not have any problem with the, the cuddle matting or the heat affecting the cuddle. And it was able to get the friction pen uh, ink to disappear. Exactly. So we have a couple of questions on the uh, the thread. And so I want to, so we did try the glide thread. That was the embroidery thread we tried here that we um, didn't have. It worked most of the time. Then every once in a while it would just mess up. And that was, that was surprising and frustrating. We're going to, we're going to um, try harder. Uh, with all of the threads and probably come up with, um, you know, some better recommendations on what, uh, what settings and stuff. Yeah. But the superior was great. Somebody best. else said that they use superior. Um, the so fine would work. It's a, um, a different weight. So it's a little bit thinner and, um, I have used the Omni thread for years and I absolutely love it. So, um, okay. that's, that's where that is. Let me see. Would you hold the mic for half a second? Yes. Okay. Thanks. I yeah. needed to, you know, do the little scroll through here. I feel like there was something else. So the, the Omni thread is a polyester. It is 100% polyester, um, just so you know. Uh, somebody asked about that. Okay. All right. So right. there's that. Okay. Tossing. <laughs> Quilt tossing. That's a new Quilt thing. Tossing. Oh, sorry. Dragging the mic around. All right. So this is a different one that we did. So that was all we did it originally with the Cuddle 3 on the back. Correct. And then I wanted to see, we wanted to see what it would look like basically the same three uh, fabrics on the top, but then with uh, a Lux cuddle on the back and specifically one that already has a, a, a pattern in it. So this is Brooklyn. Uh, that, that's what it looks like off right. the roll. Yeah, totally different look. Uh, and we wanted to see how much would get lost in this. And it's, um, this, is what, this is what I found. Uh, after we, you quilt it, you can see the, the pattern, especially if you are doing big organic shapes like a spiral or uh, some of these teardrop echo quilting shapes like paisleys. Mm -hmm. um, however, when again, it's very, it can be very hard to see what you're quilting on the front. So you end up with places that overlap a little bit. And what you end up with is the stitches holding down the lux in the back. And it, it has a tendency to look a little on the matted side. Um, and I was, if you, if you take the time with the stiletto to, to fluff it up, you can almost make all the stitches go away. So again, I'm not sure what, I'm not sure if there's a ton of value in mm -hmm. doing um, visually like artistic value in doing um, quilting with the Lux cuddle on the back, obviously there's a practical value. Right. So that it's might put you into uh, a place where you wanted a straight line quilt or or, mm -hmm. or ruler quilt, right. something like that. Right, and I feel like uh, it would be a place that if you, if you wanted to hide that you were practicing and still have a really soft quilt that, you know, might not look great, but, you know, the quilting might not be perfect, but this would be a, a great way to co to cover it. But honestly, you still can't see very well when you're quilting it. So you might as well, I don't know, use the cuddle three. Yeah, I know. I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm most satisfied with the C3 on the back. Because this you can see. So can we show the blue right there? Yes. So you can see how beautiful these little like loop-de-loops are. The paisles. Yeah, that's great. And now flip that over just so I can see the back of that corner. And that's Gone. what it looks like on the other side. <laughs> so really, I love it on the Cuddle 3. It's my favorite. I think it's absolutely fabulous. Okay. All right. What else did we want to show? Do we want to? Oh, we have a little one. So this is this has just um, been long-armed by Pantograph. Pantograph. Right? Mm -hmm. This was again. This this I didn't do this. This is, uh, this is another great example yeah, of this is what quilting. this is what would happen if you sent out a project to be quilted with cuddle back um, from a long armor. Right, because they can do a lot with a long arm that uh, is a little harder for us to do 
uh, free motion. So hold that for half a second. I'm going to grab a couple things here. Doing the reach. Okay, so this is another one. This is one that our, one of our brand ambassadors did, Susan Hastings. She quilted this. She did it with a pantograph. So if you're doing it free motion, it's a little harder to get these really fancy designs in there. Um, so that's when you would use, you know, the fancier machine. Ours doesn't, and we still get, like, beautiful results. So the point is that you don't have to do it, you know, super duper fancy. You can absolutely do the basic ones. If you want the fancy, you can farm it out still. All right, so quilting with cotton. Let's talk about that one. Oh yeah, let's do, do it. Do yeah. yeah. Oh, got it. Okay. So here, this is super fun. Okay. So this is, I feel like probably, oh yeah, got it. Yeah. It's back. a reveal. <laughs> got it. So this That's is right. something that I feel like starts to talk about, um, starts to discuss things that are most often asked about, which is to say cotton top batting, C3 on the back. Mm -hmm. So what we did here is a uh, whole cloth. Is that, is that right? Yep, whole yep. cloth quilting. All right. So it's what a I, fat quarter. I pretended quarter. it was a whole quilt. Okay. <laughs> and all I did was basically echo quilt around the shapes of these flowers and then did a ran a sort of a random, almost a zebra stripe pattern to quilt down in between them. We used a different batting on this one. This mm -hmm. is a, this is a wool batting. Mm -hmm. It's a little thicker. It gives us, it gives a little more loft. And I felt like that really worked. I would probably doing this again, maybe switch to monofilament for the mm -hmm. top thread. Uh, so that I, because you, you didn't can't have see, to, you can stitching. definitely see the stitching and we coordinated a little bit, um, with the color it's a light gray. Yeah. When I do, when I have sent my quilts to be long armed, I've used an 80 20 blend, which is a wool cotton blend. I love the wool because of the pop of it. And it actually will hold your fold lines less. So after it's quilted, mm. you, a cotton quilt will often hold the fold lines really, really well. And this one will do it less. So the, the pop of it is great. So you can see the, the quilting on it, how he just sort of followed the lines a little bit. So now you're going to notice on this one, because again, these are all tests and samples that uh, there's the straight line here. Mm -hmm. And that is the edge of my available quilting space. When we get over to the long arm, we'll talk about this again. I, you sort of use the outside edge as a highway for my, for my stitches so that I didn't have to continuously cut and and restart my threads my start the starts and stops are both time consuming and also are a place where if you want the quilting to be strong that's a weak place every time you start and stop right this section right here i'm starting to consider in the, the way that i'm planning my projects now this is what how i would want to stop this so that i could then shift the quilt in the the hoop and then pick up where I left off and not have, um, and not have uh, a really obvious start and stop place here. Mm -hmm. So okay. now so, let's show the back. Right? So let's show the back, but just a half a second, I wanna zoom in here really close because somebody had the question about using a dark fabric on the back and having it pop through. So it doesn't matter if it's dark, if it's a light on the front and it's dark on the back, you might see it pop through. I this one, I don't noticed. see anything on this of at all, all. Of all the quilting that I've done with the with uh, cuddle on the back and the front, I have not noticed fibers pulling through my stitches in either direction. I want to see on this. So this is, um, let's pull this out real quick. So on here, this one is obviously a navy back with a white front. So if you look really closely, you can see some little spots I'm sure, honestly, I'm sure it happens. Do you and notice? I, I, if I pull it here, you can't really see. It doesn't bother me at all. We have some pictures in, if you're not part of our I Love Cuddle group, we have a group on there and I have some photos in there. Sometimes it will pop up and you can see it just a little bit. It really is so minimal. The one thing that you can do is make sure that your, bat or your backing and your front are similar colors. So that's, that's the tip for that. Using batting will help. Some people use two layers of batting to help that. I, we haven't seen it on any of the things that we've done, and I've seen it very rarely on my own quilts that I've had long arms. I will tell you that maybe we're just getting lucky. We might. 
<laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, I put down the mic. Hope that was okay. okay. And, All right. And maybe buried it too. I might have buried it a little. Sorry, guys. It's a lot to keep track of. Okay, up. so here we go. Here's the big reveal. Check out the back of this thing. Look at that. Also, big mistakes. Oh, yeah. But yeah we'll sorry. talk about that in a minute too. Check that out. So this is just him tracing the design that is on the front. This, this method, I feel, is probably one of the most satisfying for me. As far as like being a beginning quilter, I could do this and look at the back and feel really proud of this almost immediately. Uh, and feel like the results were um, something that, that not only could I be proud of, but I could gift it and, um, and there would be appreciation. Yes. Uh, so um, it doesn't require a lot, of, uh, a lot of learning the ins and outs of the free motion quilting as so much as it's a great way to get comfortable with the machine and have a result that in, like almost instantly is, um, I don't know what to call it, saleable. But yeah, maybe saleable. But mm -hmm. also, you know, just, um, you know. 100% proud of. Yeah, yeah. Happy, it's absolutely yeah. gorgeous. And the fact that it is really is just sort of tracing the fabric design. And this is a K-facet, which is big, bold, floral, absolutely gorgeous. Um, so what did we mess up at the top there? Okay, Bye. so when we're <laughs> prepping quilts to load into a long arm machine. They recommend four inches all the way around of batting and backing extra. And this is what happens when you don't get the, the leader attached um, all, four inches away Oops. and it gets randomly stuck underneath. And I quilted it down a whole bunch. Yep. So Oops. Uh, that's okay. So somebody uh, asked if, if, if we were doing it on a domestic and a long arm. This was all done on the long arm, and we'll show you that in just a second. We here. are going to move over to the machine at some point. We're yep. going to do a little prep, though. We're going to do a little prep. So do you want to do you want to yeah. switch cameras? Yeah, I'm going to so take talking over about the, camera again. <laughs> the leaders and enders. All right. So I'm going to. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we're going to come back over here. All right. All right. You want to switch uh, back over to. Um, to the steady cam. There we go. So here we are. We're going to put together just a little piece that we want to, we're going to load it onto the machine. We'll show you how that whole little process works. So I know this part and he knows the artistic part. Um, I'm very practical. So what I have here is I have some C3 and I've got some of the poly request that I like so much. And I did a little quilt block last night made out of some Kaufman fabrics and some batiks that I don't know who they've from. It's from my stash. It's what we do. Um, so I just made a little block and then we have a little block of cuddle. So we're going to put the two of these together and let Hawk quilt them. So I'm going to do this part. I'm going to move these to the side. And I want to put this piece of batting on. So the way I like to do my cuddle and batting is like this. So I want to put my batting down and then my cuddle up. All right, and I'm going, we made this bigger so we can spray baste it down and uh, keep it in position and still have lots of room to play. So I'm just going to pull this back. I'm going to use my 505 spray. Oh, there's hardly any left. Um, this might be the last of it, be the last of the can. It's, a, it's an older can, so it's good to go. Okay. <laughs> So I just get a spray right along there, and then I use this. If you've ever been to any of my classes, we call it the swimming method. <laughs> it That's right. Take that. Okay, so then I'm going to switch it, and I'm going to do it from the other side. And I didn't give my good, my cuddle a good shake. Hold on half a second. I cut it and threw it up there. All right, so then I'm going to fold the back of this back. And I'm going to spray baste 
the wrong side of that. And I've got lots of extra batting here, so I'm not too afraid of where I'm spraying. Um, and I always make sure to cover all of the right side with the wrong side here when I spray base. Okay. Do that whole swimming thing again. And the key to getting the cut or the yeah the cuddle of the fabric, whatever you're using to stick, really is to snuck it. Okay. <laughs> also I gets how out. Loud that was with the open mic. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Yeah, the little our cute little thing fell off of it. What do you call that, Hawk? A windscreen. A windscreen. Yeah. I'm not originally from LA. I'm not originally from LA. We Either, but okay, so Hawk isn't originally from LA <laughs> either, but he's definitely worked in entertainment stuff and knows those those fancy words. Sometimes I do. <laughs> all right, so now I'm just going to cut all the way around this because I don't want all the extra. That's sort of what happened with that other piece is that I had a bunch of extra fabric and I didn't cut it off and then it got stuck behind it. So I tried to have extra and then add too much. Okay, so now I've got my backing ready. So my backing is here. Whenever we load it onto the long arm, you wanna make sure that your stretch is sideways on the long arm, okay? So that's really important, especially if you're using um, a one that you're gonna roll it up. So if you have a larger long arm, so the one that we're using today, that I, the one that I have is a smaller, it's a hoop frame, we'll show you in a second. But that's a smaller frame and it's a little easier to control. The large ones that are like 10, 12 feet long, they have rollers that will roll the fabric up. If you put the fabric on wrong, that will stretch as you roll it and you do not want that to happen. So we are trying to keep the stretch intact. I found that basting it first will keep that from happening too, because then I'm keeping it in place with the batting. So it's sort of stable like the batting, okay? So mine, the nap is running top to bottom. So I'm gonna flip that over. And then I'm gonna put my pieces down. So I made them those, so they were the same size. So it'd be nice and easy. Okay, I'll lay them on here, make sure my nap is going the right way. So you want the nap to go the right direction in each. And I'm gonna spray base these down as well. Don't look at my not very nice scenes. It was late, okay? Turned out fine on the front. Like one in the morning late. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best. Okay, so you can see I just laid it over. I just lay right sides together so wrong sides show. Scratch that over just a little. And then I flip that over as well. Okay, so now we've got two little squares of fabric that we're gonna put together. If I didn't, I have a little bit of sticky on the outside here. I'm not gonna care too much. Hope you don't either, Hawk. <laughs> There's a little sticky. Um, it's not too bad. I'm, I'm <laughs> so we'll be okay. Um, if you wanted to be really careful, you could obviously spray base elsewhere. Do you wanna put the little sample square of cotton off the one oh, side so yes. we can do a starter? Let's do that. So we're gonna stick this. One of the things that we learned on that first one when we started doing it was when the thread started messing up and you were already in the fabric, it was very frustrating. So we didn't take it out. We have taken it out on other things and um, it's just not fun. The stitches? Oh yeah. 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 You really don't. You really don't to want to. The stitches out. Okay. <laughs> so let me get the other part. So to put this onto the long arm, we have to get the leader on it, which um, I got these when I got my machine from... Uh, from Kelly Quitco, then I got these as well. So these are the leaders and I cut mine in half. So it comes so that you could do like a king size quilt and I knew that that wasn't what I ever wanted to do. So I made that decision that Hawk is never going to do a king size either. Um, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to make a decision for you. I just knew I wouldn't. We can base them back together again. It's true, we could. <laughs> it's true. So I have mine shorter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this so that it goes over my fabric. So somebody asked, how do you keep it straight? And the way that you would keep it straight is you would use a ruler on here to get this as straight as possible and then make sure to load it very carefully. The other thing is just try not to do designs that need to be super straight. 
So I'm going to put this down just a little bit so it gets a little closer. Does that make sense? Yes, totally okay. does. So I want to make sure. This is my center mark is what that is. So I'm going to mark the center. And then I kind of just lay this out, make sure it's nice and flat. And then I pin it. And I'm going to parallel pin because that's the way you're supposed to do it here, but also makes me feel validated because I like parallel pinning. Okay, so we're just going to pin right along this edge. And what this does is gives us a place that the machine can hold the fabric, keep it nice and taut, let it quilt it, and um, it's not going to be hidden away anywhere else in the on the machine, like you can see everything that you're going to quilt. Okay, there we go. So let me do the other end. That magnet is really strong. Okay. So I'm just going to pin this down all the way along this edge. And they have, there is also a, a like an ender that you can get, um, which we have that you can put on the other end as well. I think that what we're doing, it might just switch over, it might go over the edge. I feel like we, we might, might need it. Up, we might have enough on the bottom edge not to worry about it. I don't right, think so. I don't think so, because look, no. yeah. We're gonna oh, need. We're no, gonna need it. Absolutely right. We are gonna need it. All right. So let me let me grab that real fast. So that's basically the same thing, but it doesn't have this fun little tubing in it. So the tubing is what will help it hold on, and this one is just gonna hold on to the machine. Let's see where my center was. I didn't mark that one. So the machine itself is really. Um, fairly small and it doesn't take up a lot of space in your house which is a reason why I wanted this one um, and because I didn't know how much I would actually enjoy this it's a starter machine it's a starter we, machine we, we stepped into it yeah so the first one we the, the, the machine is a 15 inch mm -hmm. right and the machine is yeah and the the hoop can actually support a 19 inch machine and we have found almost immediately that we want those four inches. Yeah. <laughs> Give them to me. <laughs> yes, we, we, would like, we would like the four inches extra. So the machine, the, the frame, so basically there are two parts. You buy a machine and you buy a frame. So we have the hoop frame, which is, I think she said it takes up four and a half feet of space, like long wise there. Um, and if should you feel around wrong, and show them I think second. that you should. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, I'm good. I got it all pinned all on there. Ready to go. All Let right. me bring it over. Okay, so here's the machine and our little our little setup. So this is the hoop frame. You can see it's it's not that wide. Okay. And it, the depth from the wall is important. We've learned that you know sometimes you gotta scoot it away from the wall because you can hit the wall. Um Hawk <laughs> gets enthusiastic you know, about so it. How much uh, range this guy has. So this can come up to here. So this is the 15 inches that we're talking about is this here yeah because so the back of the throat touches the frame right here. exactly so a 19 inch would let us get four more inches up here right and be able to quilt all the way up here so when we're quilting it has to stop up here and we found that the more fabric that you have in the back the more this has to kind of come this way just a little bit um because there's just depth back there so one of my suggestions would be to make sure that you go in try it out see how it feels and if you can get a larger machine get a larger machine i bought mine at the beginning of the pandemic when we weren't able to go in and try it out and i feel like if i would have done that i would have made a smarter choice okay, um, but this is a great great beginner i'm not saying anything bad about the 15 inch it's, a, it's, a it's unique it's right? fabulous it's a unique by grace and it's the uh q zone hoop frame that's what i have like i said i got those at cali quilt co and they have all of the different sizes. A lot of different quilt shops have them now, and they are really, really just a great way to get started. My mom bought a version. When did she get hers? Like a year? Mom, are you there? Um, <laughs> she got hers a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago. And um, she quilts full queen size, king size quilts on hers. 100% she does that. This process, Teresa and I are usually together and I, I feel bad that she don't does. don't feel bad don't feel bad right don't feel bad right. am I doing it right I mean, yeah 
Okay. All right. So we get it loaded up on the back and then it's sort of, oops, sorry. Um, it's sort of a thing about getting it fairly even. Then what you're going to do is you roll this up. So this little part that we have here comes up and we hook it into place. So as you get it hooked. So as you quilt, if you were quilting a larger quilt, this your quilt would start to come around here and be a large bulk on the back, which we've done when you did the prismatic one. Um, it was pretty, it's pretty big on the back by the time we were done. So this just holds it in place. There's elastic bits that will uh, let you tighten it. Okay, and like I said, we are just still exploring this, experimenting, figuring it out. So if I don't do it quite right, and you're like, that's not the way they showed me. Do it the way they showed you. <laughs> I'm not taking responsibility for all of that. Oh, they're under it. Okay, thanks. Okay, so then there's these parts that go on here that hold the front. So what I found is if I give it a little tug and then snap these babies on there, that works pretty well. So you can see it's totally doable by one person. It's nice when we have two of us, but you know. Yeah. Okay, and then it has these side clamps. The side clamps are really, whoops, are really important. So these hook onto here. So what we found when we were doing this is when we made it so that they only went here, we had to clamp it onto the fabric that we wanted to quilt, which then meant we had to take this off which then gives you less stability and is not what you want to do. So this extra four inches that the quilters always tell you to give them, that's what this is for. So we'll hold on to here. We can come over, quilt this very edge and not hit these guys at all. In theory. In theory. <laughs> okay, we'll do the same thing over here. And then those are totally adjustable. So you can do whole different lengths. You could do something very narrow in here or very wide. It can actually go over the side. So if you do a wide one, it can come over the side and get clamped down. I want to talk okay. briefly. Okay. I'm going to hand the camera back to you. Do you want to take the mic? Uh, I can take the mic. Sure. There we go. All right. So I want to talk briefly about where you can actually stitch and where you can't actually stitch in this frame setup. So again, we talked about the fact that this is a 15 inch machine and this hoop can handle 19 inches. So there is it. That is all the further I can reach. If I was- So I was really lucky on how you, I put that on. That, that this works out really, really well. So what I would do, what I have done, if I am know, know that I'm going to have to move this panel up, roll it up into here and move to the next section, I might- take some blue tape or in this case some green painters tape and mark off where the bottom maximum is so actually it would I would uh, I would go here and that would keep in my eye line where I have to start thinking about my transitions to the next the to the next uh, motif so but we're in good shape here so that's great. Now, if you were over here all the way to this corner, you would find out that the machine hits yeah. the frame in the back corner. You have to mind this. Yeah. And then you'll see that this also hits these guys. So you have to mind that. Right. So there's a lot to um, be uh, mindful of as we're doing this. Okay. Sure. Um, I'm going to reiterate that somebody, I saw a couple of notes. If you are working on a large continuum frame, the loading is going to be different. So I know there's a few people on here who have the larger machines, the larger continuum frames, and thank you for your comments because it is a little different. So we're talking about doing it on a hoop frame and how we have made it work. Um, so yes, please, please talk to the store um, that you're buying it from and they will have lots of good information for you too. So basically what he's doing here is just testing it out. All right, so then I am going so we do to do a little stitching. Yeah. Sorry about the light blowing it out there, guys. That's right. I'm going to go ahead and do a needle down so I can stop and check my stitches underneath, make sure that my tension is correct and everything seems to be in order. 
Yeah, it's good. Uh, well, I also, uh, on occasion, if I don't want to get up and down a whole lot, I have a little, I have a little mirror that I can look underneath and check and see how my stitches are. Let's see if we can do can that. See that. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, it seems like our tension is set right. It's still working great. All right. Because yeah, getting on the floor and looking underneath the machine—that's a young man's game, and I'm <laughs> over it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to I'm going to drive around and oh, let's talk about how uh, briefly I'm going to bring over the iPad. Oh, okay. So with with this quilt block that she has designed for me to play on, I wanted to to uh, preview what it was that uh, I wanted to free uh, motion on. So I took a picture of the block scanned it in. I'm using a program called Procreate on my iPad Pro. You could do this with pencil and paper on a photocopy, um, just kind of giving myself a chance to get comfortable with what I'm doing, especially at the beginning, because uh, in the, my learning process, I hope down the road that maybe I can skip some of these preliminary steps. But I wanted to, uh, let's say I'm going to, I'm going to mimic the spiral patterns that are in this dark fabric in the white panels of this block and knowing that you know, on a big quilt i would probably have another one of these quilt blocks right next to it i want to be able to flow in and out so actually let's do yeah there we go that seems better so i want to use this spiral motif and we're going to start here in this corner and I'm going to flow around in almost like in a figure eight pattern and come back out this opposite corner. So let's see if all of my preliminary work helped because what we end up doing often, what I end up doing oftentimes is quilting myself into a corner. <laughs> so let's see. Well, and I think that that's like, that's part of learning is trying to figure out how to avoid doing and That's I'm going to go ahead and base, so basically, not base, but I'm going to it's stitch along the top. Actually, let me pause for a second. On <laughs> my favorite tool. You're going to give that corner a little yank. It looks like it could. It's too late. No, it's okay. Oh, there. There we go. Got it. Yep. There we go. All right. Yeah, so my favorite tool has become his favorite tool. Yay for my new stiletto. And I have this set at, oh, as I drive off <laughs> the edge, um, I have seven, seven stitches per inch um, is how this is set. Uh, all right, so let's try. Oopsie. Sorry. I'm going to pause that for a second and see if I can look at my... <laughs> I think I'm going to overthink this. You might try. I'm going to try not to. Try to try not to overthink it. All right, here we go. And so we can start seeing it when it's the light is blown out. We can't really see it, and then you look away, we can see it. There we go. So as you're doing this, you're just kind of in your mind remembering where the pieces, where the circles were supposed to go. Yeah. So and if they wanted to, you could take a friction pen to this. Totally. Trace it out. 
probably be, you know, wise. Seems more than reasonable. All right. All right. Boom. Boom. Look at that. Ta da. So you can see <laughs> that it's totally doable. So, and what it does, like, it's interesting because this is a, a very light gray. So, this is the Omni Throw, and this is the little light gray thread that we're using. I don't know if they can hear me very well. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I but think I ran off with the mic. It's okay. There we go. Oh. <laughs> um, so we've got the light gray thread. So like I said, it's the superior thread that we're using. So you can see it just a little bit. But we'll show you what it looks like on the back soon too. Yeah. All right. So So let's see if we can come under. We'll do this like we uh we normally do here. Weow. Okay. Take the light off and see if that actually helps. It might There we go. We can sort of see it. So somebody had suggested, Hawk, that you could use a door mirror underneath it to see. And I think that's a lovely idea if we have like a little area it can sit on. So look at how pretty that is. All right. Let's do it on the cuddle and see what happens. Okay. Thanks for going for a little trip there, guys. So, so super fun. So this is one where you could actually, you could now do something inside those little squares. Or you could go on and do something else. So I feel like the, the long arm quilting, especially when you're doing it, the free motion quilting, when you're doing it yourself has so much I mean, the possibility. And somebody mentioned that you can lock the wheels and do a straight line, which you absolutely, absolutely. can. So in the back, I'm gonna show you just a little, there are these little red tab things back there. Can you point to one? Yep, there, there they are. These and guys, those lock it in I can, position. I can lock X axis or Y axis, up and down or left and right, I yep. can lock in. And there's another Which one is right great. here. So if I press that down, it lifts the whole machine up in, on one axis and keeps it from traveling that exactly. way. Exactly. So you can totally do straight line quilting by locking those in and then just going for it. So we all, speaking of other ways of setting up designs, we have purchased and acquired oh, right. a ruler table for this machine and uh, realize that what we have not gotten yet is the correct foot for it. So this yes. is the ruler table that would go onto the, the, the throat. A ruler base. A ruler is base. The, technically the, the name for it. And uh, some uh, uh, Lea, Lea Day mm -hmm. rulers. We added a little bit of grippy on the, onto the back. Yep, an Odif product, an, an which Odif is product. awesome. I yep, love it. That seemed to help, except that Almost immediately, I found when I started trying to use these that the ruler kept trying to jump in under my needle, and that was, scary. was super scary. And also, it actually hit the corner of this ruler once. Yep. And will break your needles, mess up the timing on your machine. So what did we find? Bleed, cause you to bleed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to buy a new foot. Yes. So you have to get a foot, the ruler base, and the rulers, and the Odif spray. But it does let you do some really cool designs, some swoops. If you are not as artistic as Hawk, I am not. So I need some help with the swoops. I'm just going to do some hazels. Yeah. Okay. 
So one of the things that I think is really interesting when he does the quilting is you can see it pushes the nap in different ways. And so you can see this, I don't know, design that kind of happens that is interesting based on the map of it. So the free motion quilting is definitely, um, yeah, it relies on your sight, your skill, and there's some things that kind of mess with it. So Leslie asked about basting it down, and you didn't actually use a basting stitch. You I used the seven stitches per inch that you normally do. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Um, if I was doing a big project where I felt like I needed to, be, to move it around to get to different layers, I feel like it probably I would probably want to baste it down yet first. I have not gotten to that stage of the game yet. I am still in doing You're still in like practice mode. Practice mode, yeah. Sheila said we were enabling her, and I think that's great. The more long armors, the better. The more free motion quilting, the better. I think it's just lovely. Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to have to worry about it, Sue. <laughs> she says good luck getting back on that machine. <laughs> yep, he does great with it. He has a good time with it. And if I can do all the quilt making and he does all the quilting, I'll be happy. So you just sort of shifted directions then. I had bad. to. I, I quilted myself into a corner. For sure. Right. Not, not super happy about it. It worked that's, out beautifully. I'm just always so impressed about how beautiful it looks on the cuddle. Somebody asked about the needle size. We have a 16 needle in there. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So we used a 16 needle. Um, we haven't changed that. We did mess with the needle a little bit before and it didn't seem to make any difference. Um, so uh, we haven't messed with it too much. We did, we didn't talk about that we have changed the uh, foot height. And that was something that we definitely adjusted. We didn't oh, yeah. have to change here this time, but when we've done some other things, we've had to adjust that a little bit. And I found that that makes a huge difference in if you're having skip stitches. So that is the one thing that we have really yeah, moving, had to try to research. Down, moving it so that it's dropping it down so that it's just barely touching the cuddle. Seems like not a lot of extra pressure and not too loose either. If it's, if it's above, let's bring it over here there it's just barely touching the nap and move and moving the nap around uh and that seems to be a, a good the way to indicate spot. it yeah, yeah. so i'm gonna to i'm gonna come out. over here so we can show this and then do you want to take it off the yeah, machine so will you do a little swipe on the nap to get the nap to all go back see so you can see how that was doing it with the where the needle where the foot pushes it it changes the nap which and actually is kind of a help back. honestly <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sewing quite so blind or stitching quite so blind that way. All right, so we'll do this. We'll pull it off, and then you guys can see what the back of it looks like. All right. Yeah, Audrey says he's so talented. It's just not fair. Look how easy this is. I'm like, I know. That's All what right. I. Do. Right, but so he has a lot of a lot of practice. He has been. You've been a painter for. Well, I mean, my whole 30 life. Years. So yeah. now, they, okay. So one thing that actually is translating over to this is that I spent my 20s as a professional airbrush artist ocean city maryland on the boardwalk t-shirts and license plates all the all of the fun stuff um and with that <laughs> motion of running an airbrush i've been able to translate some of that muscle memory into this so i got a little bit of a head start but this machine is not an airbrush either. So. Also, I want to pull back just a little bit. Can you show them how you stand when you are doing the quilting? Well, okay, so I'm either going to stand with my, my feet, like basically shoulder width apart, or maybe even a little wider. And I'm trying to bring my power and my stability up from the ground. The same worked when I was airbrushing. Um, like 
all of, I'm, I'm trying to limit how many things are moving at once. So I'm like, trying to get my elbows to lock in a little bit. And I'm trying to, I will oftentimes steer with my knees. Um, I don't know. And then the, also, I'm happy to, to sit in a chair with a pillow on it and, and work this way as well. And then I'll lock my forearms onto the frame a little bit. And sometimes I'll just run with my wrists. Trying to limit the number of axis, axes that are moving at the same time, I think is better. That's, I don't know if that's. I think that was great. Okay. I hope you all got to hear that. The mic situation is a thing. We'll fix it. We just figured out a way to get two mics. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, you spend money. Yeah, you spend money. <laughs> Which we <laughs> well, haven't they didn't, done yet. They didn't have it before. Right. So he's just taking it off to take off all of those clips. Okay. So you could see where he quilted to was as far as we could quilt on the 15 inch machine. So, like I said, if you can get a bigger machine, do it. Okay. So let's bring this over here. Check that out. Okay, so that is the side that you did with cuddle on both sides. Mm -hmm. And then this is the one that you did with the cotton patch. Check that out. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Um, okay, so we had a question about height help. Is the table adjustable? It 100% is. You can totally change it to oh, yeah, you can show how... It down um, here. Oh, thanks, Judy. Um, yep. So let me show you. There are little screws down here that totally let you change the height there. Okay. So you can make this taller or shorter. So if you want to sit all the time, you absolutely can. If you want to stand a little bit taller, and we've talked about that a few times about maybe raising it. And he's decided that he likes the flexibility of being able to kind of go um, sitting or standing. All right. So let me see if there are any other questions in here. Can I help with let me the see the camera? I don't actually have to do this part. Right okay. Now. You don't. Yeah, it's totally true. Let's, um, yeah, let's come back over to the other camera. And Sounds we'll good. Say goodbye. Okay, so Michael. There we are. Ta da. Okay, so I think that we are <laughs> unmuted over here. We'll see if we can get this figured out. So hopefully that helped answer a lot of questions. I'm going to look through the comments just really quick and see. Uh, so somebody said that they use more stitches per inch. I always suggest less stitches per inch with the cuddle because it just seems to be easier on a long arm. And like I said, the difference between sewing it on a domestic machine, on a hoop frame, and on a continuum frame are all going to be different. And then there are also the sit down versions of the um, like a mid arm where you actually just move the fabric around. There is all sorts of variations. The thing that I will suggest is that you talk to your dealer, you try it out, and then you find what works for you. So do some experimenting as well. I think that there's um, there's a lot of there's a lot of learning that happens just in being willing to kind of mess things up and try new things and see if that works. I'm watching the comments and there are some folks out here that have obviously got a lot of experience. Mm -hmm long arming in general and long arming with cuddle and i see what you're telling me and i will be going back through it and paying a lot of attention i'm really excited to learn from all of you yeah thank you so much yeah i'm really excited to have a bunch of people here who have a lot of experience doing it and then a lot of people here who are like we have been where we're like this sounds like a lot of fun now let's see what we can do so hopefully we've been able to help you kind of like move past some of the big questions that you have i love the machine that we have we haven't had any issues with it it's been great the light we didn't talk about the light but that light bar above of things i can recommend that you get with that that would be one so the ruler base and that light bar are like get them from the beginning the light bar makes a huge difference we are able to quilt at you know midnight sometimes um because that's what you got to do. Um, and you can still, like, you have plenty of light and it's wonderful. So I totally recommend that. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, it looks like we have answered most of the questions. We'll go back as what we always do, go back and read questions and answer comments yes. and blah, 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 blah. So um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing the video. Thanks for being here. We are going to take a break and we will be off for two, well, 
not really off. We just want to have a sew together Tuesday for two weeks. We'll be back at the beginning of April. I think it's April 6th. We'll be back with another episode of Sew Together Tuesday, and we have a whole new lineup of stuff that we are doing. I'm very excited to share them with some different fabrics and projects and um, going over some old favorites as well. And so, I will be safely back behind the camera. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see we'll see hmm. no <laughs> somebody's thank, got plans so for me. thank you so much for your help today i appreciate thank it you. it was really good to have um to be able to share this because it hasn't been something i've been um able to get enough practice at and he has and i'm so excited to see where this goes because yes as you saw his artistic skill is pretty pretty magical so thank you again for joining us we'll be back in two weeks the lucky winner for today is brenda s so congratulations brenda we will send you like i said three yards of cuddle 390 which is the perfect quilt backing it's 90 inches wide so you can quilt most everything um, it's wonderful you can piece it if you need to and like I said, there is Lux Cuddle Mirage 80, which is an 80 inch wide Lux Cuddle. So if you're interested in that, let me know too, and we'll figure that out. But C390 is my favorite for long arm quilting. It's just, it's the best. So we will send her, send you, Brenda, three yards of that fabric, and we'll have uh, Christina send you a copy of her book so you can get started and make some beautiful, beautiful cuddleback quilts. So thank you again for joining us. I am very grateful you were here with us. Thank you, Hawk, for your, for your you know, presence and your uh, art. I appreciate thanks. it. Thanks, everybody. Three, two, one. Happy, Happy sewing. sewing. Bye.